If you're a photographer, you may have gas, gear acquisition syndrome. It's an affliction that we all come across sooner or later. That nagging feeling that if I only had this lens, then I would feel complete. If I only had that camera, then I would be successful. And there's one lens that somehow feels like the antithesis and epitome of gas all at once. The Canon RF 28-70 f2. I've heard so many photographers, myself included, say, if I only had this lens, I could replace all of my other lenses. I could sell all of my primes. And while that seems like an intriguing idea, I'm here to raise the question, is that actually a good thing? Hi everybody, for those of you who are new here, my name is Zach. I'm a photographer and arts administrator based in Santa Barbara, California. And a few weeks ago, I finally rented the RF 28-70 F2. Wow, what an incredible piece of gear it is. And I can save you a lot of time by simply saying that this lens is exactly what you think it is. Image quality is next level, autofocus is incredibly fast and accurate, it has gorgeous character and a versatile variable focal length while offering a consistently bright aperture and featuring a premium build quality. It's a masterpiece of a lens, despite what we already know, it's really big and it's really expensive. So the only question left to ask yourself is, is this lens right for me? Now this is a theme that comes up a lot in my videos here on the channel because I feel like photography is very personal. As photographers, our work and our process is unique to us. What we make and how we make it is a part of each of us. So is this lens right for me? Is it right for you? How do we know? Before we get too philosophical, let's talk through the basics. This is an RF L series lens. Basically, it's a professional weatherproof, bright, fast focusing lens. Yes, it offers a lot, but it's currently selling for over 3,000 US dollars. And that's a hefty sum. So if you're going to invest in this lens, you want to know that it's the right lens for you. So let's just bust through a few key points. We'll start with build. It's a big lens and it's quite heavy. It's probably one of the largest lenses I've ever used. And the filter thread is a whopping 95 millimeters, so your filters just aren't gonna fit. But that being said, it's usable. I was able to test it at a wedding reception and a couple session, and in both situations, the lens was manageable. Yes, it's a bit uncomfortable at times, but if you decide that this lens is for you, you'll likely be able to get past the unusually hefty build. Aside from that though, it feels very premium and the build quality is quite nice, as is expected of an RF lens of this price. It seems redundant to mention that the superb optics of this lens make the hefty build worth it. The lens is sharp, it produces rich contrast and has beautiful color rendition. And in addition to letting in plenty of light, the consistent F2 aperture creates a subtle separation between subject and background across all focal lengths. Autofocus is deadly accurate on this lens. Like most other RF lenses, it's difficult to miss focus when using this lens. Even in low light, the autofocus is impressively accurate. This isn't really a lens I would consider for video. The size and the fact that it's not stabilized make it a tough sell for shooting anything handheld. It produces beautiful results though, and could be used in a more controlled setting like a studio but that's just my opinion. Now, what about character? As I mentioned before, the F2 aperture creates a special look for this lens across all focal lengths. You get this beautiful separation from the background without completely eliminating any trace of the subject's environment. It offers a really special look for sure. So now the question we've all been waiting for, is it for you? Something I set out to answer for myself when I tested this lens was could this lens feasibly replace my prime lenses and become a partner to my 70 to 200, giving me a two lens kit? It seems like a perfect combination if you're trying to get away with using a very minimal amount of gear, and in many ways it is. These lenses complement each other very nicely. However, I'm not sold. And I'm going to tell you why, but before I do, I want you to know that this is completely my own opinion and my own philosophy. You may completely disagree with me, and perhaps you should. But for me, 24mm to 70mm is a focal range where primes are king. I prefer using primes in this range, and I own a 24, a 35, and a 50 
that I use regularly. For me, the experience is more enjoyable than using a zoom lens at this focal range, especially one as massive as the 28 to 70. However, above 85 millimeters, zooms become more practical and primes more impractical for the way that I shoot. For example, I have the 135 F2, and while I love the look of that prime, I just don't use it because that focal length is limited in a prime lens. You need to have the shot in mind before you put that lens on your camera. But with something like the 70-200 f2.8, I get all the benefits of an amazing prime lens, but the versatility of a zoom at longer focal lengths. It's a game changer. But primes at wider focal lengths feel plenty versatile for me and are a more attractive proposition. For me, I'd rather shoot with a 50 and my 70 to 200 than a 28 to 70 and my 70 to 200. I just don't feel that I need the variable focal length when shooting in the focal range of 24 to 70. Yes, it means I'll be changing lenses to get a wider shot, and that's likely what many of you are trying to avoid if you're interested in the 28 to 70. However, for me, that's just fine, and I actually prefer it. So I'll be skipping the 28 to 70 simply because it's not a lens that would make sense for me considering how I like to shoot, but that's completely personal. Despite the size and cost, this is one of the best zoom lenses I've ever used. I really did enjoy it, and I loved the look it produced when combined with my R6. It's really special, but it won't be replacing my primes. However, I think if you have a specific use case for this lens, you'll absolutely love it. It can definitely get the job done and it will do it extremely well. So let me know what you think in the comments. Is this lens going to replace your primes? Is it worth it? Let me know down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I'd love to see you at the next video. Thank you, thank you as always for watching. I'll see you soon, bye. Love is free.